Hey, les chicos, bienvenidos a Casa de Deportes. Bienvenidos al episodio número 8. Con el NBA 2K16, Kareem Jackson, el armador, el base de los Utah Jazz. Nos enfrentamos en nuestro último partido como rookie en la NBA a Los Ángeles Lakers en el Staples Center. Qué forma de cerrar nuestro año de rookie, si es que lo podemos llamar así, que solo jugamos 8 partidos. Qué mal ahí tú, que ahí tú también, Spike Lee, que tú fuiste el de la idea. Y ya saben que estamos comenzando desde la banca. Han visto todo lo que está sucediendo. En la historia de Kareem Jackson Y a partir de este episodio y el 9 Le daremos conclusión a Living the Dream Pero después en Casa Deporte Seguiremos la historia con Kareem Jackson Como ya les platicaba en el episodio número 7 Pero mientras tanto vamos a intentar cerrar con un bang Contra Los Ángeles Lakers 18-16 en el marcador Y ya saben que tenemos que cubrir a nada más y nada menos que a D'Angelo Russell Conseguimos el rebote defensivo Casi casi de pura suerte El balón para Dante Exxon Nuestro mejor amigo prácticamente en este equipo Porque es el que más se esfuerza Y el que más nos da asistencia ya vemos que no llevamos ningún punto Pero sí tenemos rebotes y asistencias Vamos a correr la jugada que nos manda el entrenador Intentando sacar a relucir los pasos de baile Kareem Jackson, mejor vamos a seguir lo que nos dice el entrenador La pantalla que nos abrió todo el camino El callejón, para que la clavemos Sin mucha fuerza y vemos que el tatuaje Los tatuajes de Kareem Jackson Ya completaron el brazo de Kareem Jackson y poco a poco le iremos añadiendo más, creo que el brazo me quedó fenomenal y más porque podemos hacer cosas como esta con ese brazo, así es luce bien, ¿no? a mí me gusta bastante cómo luce este jugador me ha agradado cómo lo he dejado también obviamente su cabello irá cambiando conforme vayan pasando los meses, los días pero eso es tema aparte que ya les había platicado. Mientras tanto, volvemos a encontrar a Dante Exxon que estaba fuera de la pintura. Consigue los tres puntos en CG2 y nos están llenando de galardones en este partido. Y vemos que estamos ganando fácilmente. Nos vamos de costa a costa de este oeste. Intento pedir el balón, no me lo dan. Voy por el rebote ofensivo, lo consigo. Le doy la asistencia a Trevor Booker. Sí, señor, no seré el más alto, no seré el más atlético, pero le ponemos corazón en cada partido. El público se fue del Staples Center porque después de esta paliza, ¿quién se quisiera quedar? Así termina nuestro año como rookie Léale youtuberos y ahora Veamos la conclusión de Living the Dream Veamos hablando con Kobe Bryant Con nadie más y nada menos que Kobe Bryant Veamos la conclusión de la historia de Karim Jackson Living the Dream Que sucederá alrededor En la familia de Karim Jackson Eso en este episodio En el episodio 9 ya. Cece. Hey, how are you? Good to see you again. My pleasure. Freak. Great game last night. That's what I do, right? Indeed, have a seat. Pagnotti. How you doing? Thought you'd be selling used cars by now. Funny, comedian. I thought you would have invested in some new clothes, being a team owner and all. I see you still rocking that goodwill look. Freak, what are you hanging around with this guy for? You know he's bad company, right? Got no choice. He helped me pay the bills. Plus, our mother loves him. Thank you all for coming by on such short notice. You're welcome. So you know why we're here, right? Not really. You want to negotiate an extension for Freak, right? Well, since you mentioned it, your client is quickly becoming a liability for this organization. We've already put a plan in place that's finish, going to address Dom, all your concerns please, and issues. Let me finish. Thank you. Myself, the front office, and the coaches are not satisfied with the adjustments you've made in your life off the court. I personally warned you about the company you keep, and we're fed up with the late nights and showing up late to shoot arounds and the bad press and the incident at the nightclub. <sighs> I told you Vic was going to be your downfall and I was right. Something has to change now or we're not going to need your services any longer. Hey, if this is about that Twitter stuff, Vic was playing. Okay, it was a joke. It's not about that. It's everything. But like I told you before, Vic is my best friend. I can't just cut him off. He's practically family. Not really. What exactly are you trying to say? I'm not trying to say anything, Dom. I'm saying it. Freak and his friend Vic are a problem for me and this organization. And I called you in here to figure out how we all together can fix this problem. And right now, I'm only seeing one solution. I agree that Freak may need to make some adjustments in his personal life off the court, but that's a learning process. We both know that. But this, this almost sounds like a threat. And Dom Pagnotti doesn't take too kindly to threats. Is this a threat? Call it what you will. We all know that Vic is a problem. The only person who doesn't seem to realize that is my brother. I'm sorry, bro, but enough is enough. I don't have a problem with what you're saying. I have a problem with how you're saying it. Now, I know we can come to some understanding without all the ultimatums of threats. Can we all come to a understanding, a compromise? No, no more compromises. I already warned Freak. I told you, don't be a hero, cut that zero. 
it's cut Vic loose, or we trade Freak. It's that simple. Fine, we'll go sign with another team. Good luck with that, Pagnotti. Because of Vic, Freak's reputation precedes him. No, because of Freak's God-given talent, his reputation precedes him. Everybody's been talking. Dom, you know how this works. This is not about you and me and our history. This is about your client. Help him. You're talking as if I'm invisible. You're talking around me, about me, but not to me. Vic has always had my back. And I've given this team everything I got. I practice hard. I play hard. Yeah, some nights I got it, some nights I don't. Some days I might even show up a little late to shoot around. But every time I'm on that car, I've always given my best. And I see how it is, though. I mean, us players got to be loyal to you, but you don't have to be loyal to us players. Try to give me some father and son talk, talking about how you love your players and how you look up for them. Hey, come on, man. You trying to cut me off like you cut off Izzy. Don't you have people loyal to you no matter what? People you can't cut off? Well, that's me and Vic. Vic and me. Y'all insist, really. They could tell me stop hanging with Vic. What makes you think they won't tell me stop talking to you? Yeah, you remember in seventh grade, some guys were trying to jump me over some girl. Vic was the one to get some friends just to walk me home. And when they came, we went at it, but I wasn't alone. When I got my scholarship, it was Vic who put the word on the streets that nobody should mess with me because I had a future. Vic was protecting me. And sir, I, I know, I know Vic is crazy. But before all the hype and the lights, media, fans, it was just me and Vic. He's always been there. I mean, if y'all don't like that, I don't know what to say. It hurts me to say this, but I see his point. What you don't understand is that the league doesn't have your back anymore. Not like they used to. They try, but it's too much. Social media has changed everything. And this last incident with Vic, that was the final straw. It was a joke. It wasn't funny. You know it wasn't a joke. Vic was defending you, stepping in to protect your honor by attacking another teammate like that? Talking about his manhood, his wife, his kids, his family, so you can be the big dog on the court? What's on call for? And they all know your relationship with Vic, so they think it's coming from you. But that's the media blowing everything out of proportion, as usual. It's not just the media. He's attacking other players, other teams. He's out of control. Vic just doesn't know how to behave. We got guys on our squad who don't want to be here because of that beef. There is no place for that kind of inappropriate behavior in this league. If you can't trust your teammates, who can you trust? What Vic is doing isn't right. He's bringing you down, and people can see it. I see how all the other players are looking at you. Oh, it's not cool. It's not cool at all. What, don't talk to him? Don't hang with him? You do what you gotta do, that's your call. But let me tell you this. You asked me if I had friends that I couldn't cut off? Yeah, I did for a while. Friends, business partners, girlfriends, wives, family that I thought I couldn't cut off. But I learned that sometimes you gotta make the hard decisions. I mean, some of these people, they were just bad for me. They were bringing me down. They weren't making me better. They were good for the time that they were there, but I grew up, not in age and maturity, but in mind and spirit. I was ready for the next level in my life. And I'll be honest with you, I've been on the receiving end of that. I've been cut off before myself, and yeah, it hurt at the time, but looking back, they were doing the right thing for me. Just don't tell my ex-wife that, Pagnotti. So what's the next move? The next move is freaks, it always has been. Question is, is he ready and willing to do what needs to be done? This is messed up. You take a moment to think about it, but think long, think wrong. The snafu should have been cleaned up a long time ago. With or without you, we got games to win. Freak, you gotta handle your business. Okay, we've all said our piece. He might cut me off as your manager, but I will always be your sister. So when this is on you. I might not like it, but I will respect any decision you make. Yvette, please.
CC. Yvette. Where's Dom? I had him call you. Why? I'm gonna cut right to the chase. My brother is deeply in love with you. And I'm ready to put our differences aside if you are. Really? On a strain. I'm, I'm with it. Team Freak. Team Freak. All right, so if you're gonna be down with the team, I gotta show you the dap. Oh, the dap? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so good. Oh. One, two, three, three shoot, shoot, swish. Swish. Yeah. Again. Like, mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> One, two, three, swish. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like that. Cool, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know money isn't everything to you, Freak, and I find it hard to say this, but I've grown to respect that in you. You're a man of conviction, but it's my responsibility to point out the consequences of that way of thinking. Now, for you, winning is everything, but winning isn't something you could do alone. It requires excellent, or at the very least, competent coaching, contributing teammates, and God willing good health. And we all know that's not a guarantee. Now, the reality is you're not in control of any of those other factors, but if you, as the star player, fail to win and deliver a championship, you will be held responsible. You will be scapegoated, you will be villainized, and you will be punished accordingly. So when you say to me that as a free agent, all you care about is being in the best position to win, I understand what you mean. But again, that's not only up to you. Now, I'm going to call my guy at Apollo Jets. I'm going to get us a private plane for this tour. I promise you, you're gonna love the free agency experience. Now, your relationship with Vic has unfortunately cost us in some of these negotiations. We had 10 teams interested, we now only have three. But thankfully, thankfully, you wised up when it came to Vic. Have you been in contact with Vic? Yo, freak, look at me. He still has one of my cars, Dom. What did I tell you about the L word? The L word? What is that? Loyalty. Uh. I don't know what kind of hold this Vic has over you, but it makes me scared. You're a free agent for the first time in your career, and the only person you need to be loyal to is you. You need to be an FOF. You need to be a friend of Freak. Let's forget about winning without appropriate compensation and loyalty that hasn't been earned and isn't deserved. This is a tough business, Freak. We need to be tougher. Come on. CC? Woo! Lord Jesus, I was about to blow a gasket. <sighs> okay, freak. Now, I've, there are very few options on the table, and I want you to explore them all before making your final decision. Whatever you decide, it needs to be an informed decision, not an emotional one. The larger the markets, the greater resources at your disposal and exposure for you. But if you don't allocate these resources properly, then it's just a big spotlight on you as you lose. Well, thank you kindly, big sis. She's right, freak. Thanks, Don. Absolutely. Team Freak, that's what we're about. Oh, whoa, I don't know if I like this. What? Dom and CC high-fiving like that? I mean, yeah, why you got so certain I'm gonna lose? Whoa, 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 no one thinks you're going to lose, Freak. You guys sure sound like it. We just want you to select a franchise that has great coaching, super talent exposure, but most importantly, a ton of cap space. If the team doesn't win and you're to blame, at least you won't be broke, capiche? Capiche. Also, you should make sure it's somewhere you want to raise a family, but no pressure. Mm. <laughs> you guys have made this decision so much easier. What did mom and dad say? You know what they said. I mean, but honestly, I'm torn. I've heard and listened to what you've all had to say. Don't take this the wrong way. There's just one person I haven't heard from, and that's Vic. Oh, Lord, help us. Yo, Vic, where you at? I've been trying to call you, man. Hit me back. Do you know him? He's probably somewhere too loud to hear his phone. I don't know. I think Vic's actually upset with me. Así que leales youtuberos, somos agentes libre por nuestra relación con Vic Van Leer Bosquillat. Y tendremos que ir a la agencia libre donde no negociaremos con distintos equipos en la NBA. Eso en el episodio 9 decidiremos qué equipo se tomará. Les puedo adelantar que les va a encantar la decisión. No se pueden perder por nada. 
por nada en el mundo el episodio 9 que va a estar lleno de emociones y claro, un nuevo equipo y la explicación de por qué se tomó ese equipo, pero les prometo que casi casi se explica solo. Leales youtuberos, eso es Toño por este video, muchas gracias, ya saben qué hacer, si les gustó, los likes siempre son bien recibidos y los comentarios intentan ser contestados. No olviden seguirme en mis redes sociales, en Twitter y en Facebook para estar enterado de toda la actividad del canal y poder contactarme de forma más directa. No olvides comer frutas y verduras, ahí nos vemos.